Bartaj, thanks for being on with us. The reaction we did see in these stocks yesterday warranted? Uh, absolutely, Morgan, and thank you for having me. Um, you know, uh, there's a real distinct possibility that the overall TAM, the total you know, accessible market for vaccine sales, is probably going to decrease without government involvement. Uh, it'll be more competitive, putting pricing pressure. Uh, and there's also vaccine fatigue, you know, in the general population. So I, I think that uh, that reaction is probably warranted, in, you know, for, for the near-term outlook of vaccine stocks. Yeah, when we talk about triple-digit gains, I mean, Moderna comes to mind. Just today, New York City announcing that it's going to end COVID vaccine mandates for the private sector as well as student athletes. Does this stock have farther to fall from here, given the fact that it did see such a strong run-up? Yeah, you know, Morgan, really, Moderna is sort of the classic sort of tension stock right now. And the ten what I mean by tension, it's the tension between near-term expectations on its COVID-19 sales franchise versus being literally the leader in mRNA therapeutics going forward. Um, you know, there was a very famous company called Genentech that was an antibody leader, which is Regeneron now. Um, you know, these are companies that are solving very complex diseases with their therapeutic modalities. And Moderna will do that, most likely, with their mRNA therapeutics. They're in the lead, manufacturing, uh, you know, preclinical, clinical development, um, fantastic team. In the near term, though, by that I mean six to probably 18 months, there is this tension, you know, from the expectation of COVID-19 sales where everybody's sort of, uh, you know, very, very focused on. And I think that could put pressure on the stock. However, if you're a believer in MRN therapeutics as being, you know, fairly large segment of therapeutic sales five or 10 years from now, um, from 20, 50 billion right now to about 100, 150 billion, you know, 10, 10 years from now, then you should probably, you know, keep owning Moderna and maybe even buy some, you know, on, on, on extreme dips. You know, but I wonder, again, to your point, as revenues from the vaccine start to abate and they have to continue to spend a lot of money on these future uh, opportunities, you know, is there going to be a period of time where it's just all on the come to a certain extent and therefore perhaps the stock is not going to react well? You know, I mean, you've kind of actually hit on probably our key concern going forward. It's less on the revenues. You know, we've been modeling that for about a year now. I think it's well understood uh, that revenues are going to decrease, probably decrease by 50 percent next year and then even more the year after that. The real concern is around earnings. Uh, they are spending so much. You know, this year, their total OPEX spend will be larger than Vertex, you know, a peer company uh, of theirs in Boston. And Vertex has been around for 20 years. Um, so um, that's a very significant spend. And if, you know, vaccine sales really start decreasing very rapidly, you could have one or two years of negative, going back to negative earnings, which is bad in itself. But it also, you know, there's a lot of funds all over the world, as you know, David and Carl and Morgan, that cannot own companies that are, you know, that, that are not break even. So it just adds to the pressure on the stock from the earnings perspective. But, but you're absolutely right. That could be an issue. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.